After I wrote the introduction to A Decade of Old Hitchin on Film, bemoaning the lack of material for future shows, I received from Jerry Tidy a welcome loan of two VHS tapes containing material not seen before. One was a video of a community play about the history of Hitchin performed in the open air, not really suitable for my purpose. But the other one, called Hitchin 1971, showed scenes from our town nearly 50 years ago and could be an excellent source of material. The film had been shot on Super 8 film by Michael Muir, who ran the shop Hermitage Cameras, but the video transfer appeared to have been made by pointing a video camera at a screen while it was projected. It was accompanied by a voiceover describing the scenes as they appeared with historical commentary, but in a rather dull, monotonous tone. The picture quality leaves a lot to be desired, but I present here a summary to whet your appetites in the hope that a better transfer can be arranged in future. The film claims to describe the reasons why Hitchin has grown up, where it is, and how the geology affects its watercourses. It starts with the geological survey map, which I've replaced to show the band of clay. It goes on to talk about the layer of chalk from which the springs forming Hitchin's rivers arise. It continues with an unlabeled map and talks of three rivers, uh, except I've drawn out the four actual streams with labels over the Ordnance Survey map. After a diversion showing laburnum trees, the film moves alongside the Oakfield estate, looking at Ippolitz Brook. There's a promise of following Hitchin's boundaries as the camera swings to reveal the cameraman is standing on the railway embankment. There follows three minutes to make the rail enthusiast salivate with shots of long-vanished track layout and nostalgic pictures of old rolling stock. A view of the engineer's stockyard, whilst a loco haul train passes Hitchin South signal box. The chalk cliffs below Benslow bring back the geology theme briefly. The watercress beds alongside the Purwell at Nine Springs make an appearance. The commentator tells some stories about a gypsy lady who lived in a tent on what is conveniently known as Gypsy Lane. Some rather boring views of bare fields, where we have to imagine the Roman villa discovered there in the 19th century, before we move on to William Road. After a brief diversion to look at the fox in William, we see Queenswood Drive. Then it's back to Cambridge Road for a distant view of the Harkness Roses building. Heading back towards town, we see the traffic at Walsworth Crossroads. The Exide advert on the railway bridge was a local landmark for many years. Bowman's Mill stood on the corner of Nightingale Road and Walsworth Road. It was demolished in 1985. We're looking across the railway line from near Fernhill School to the clump of trees marking a Bronze Age burial mound. I think here we're standing on the railway embankment looking along Stotfold Road to Wilbury Hill. The vantage point enables a long zoom to the gasworks. We admire its modernistic structures. Then it's back to the Ignield Way path to see the crossing box at Cadwell. And a view of the houses being built by the river, where the path crosses it. Bowman's Mill at Ickleford has lasted longer than its sister near the station. We step across Bedford Road now, to view the River Orton. and its source in the spring at Orton Head. After this view of the pumping station on the Purton Road, the first part of the film loses its track by skipping off to Pegsden. The second part resumes along Purton Road.
Moving quickly to the source of the River His at Wellhead in Charlton, with the associated pumping station. There is a needless diversion showing toilets flushing and baths filling to illustrate water use, before resuming with the Bessemer Blue Plaque and his former home. The curve in the road at Ashbrook brings us almost back to where we started in our tour of Hitchin's Boundary. Next it's up to the top of Windmill Hill for views of the town centre. St Mary's Church, the Riverside and the Big Inn. The market in 1971 was a lot busier than it seems today. The churchyard shops and the historic marketplace. The Corn Exchange and High Street. Bucklersbury and more of the High Street. After a glance at Hermitage Road, the film comes to an end.